our worship with a prayer. Almighty and merciful God, you are the only source of health and healing. You alone can bring calmness and peace. Grant to us, your children, an awareness of your presence and a strong confidence in you, in our pain, in our weariness, in our anxiety. Surround us with your care. Protect us by your loving might and permit us once more to enjoy health and strength and peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Knowing that God is in charge even in ways that, that we don't understand and, and sometimes aren't sure how to participate with, the part that we are called to peace and to hope and to caring for one another walk as Jesus walked, but knowing that even though we walk through dark valleys, difficult times, because God is God and, and we aren't, we don't have to be. We can say, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, we continue with the brief order of confession and hearing the words of forgiveness. In the mystery of faith and the power of God's presence, we are gathered to worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Called by the mercy of God, we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may more perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if we say that we have no sin or pretend that sin does not cause harm and we ourselves are complicit, we're deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, ask God's mercy and grace God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Something to think about. What God does for us and for all of us. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. We come to church to hear this good news. We share this good news with others through our acts of kindness and grace. And it is God's work. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives power to become the children of God and bestows upon us his Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. And for gathering him today, different from what is in your bulletin, let us sing uh, verses 1 and 3 of Amazing Grace, and I will attempt to, to lead you to recall from your memory.
lift our hearts to the Lord in prayer. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. In you alone is there true security and rest from the trials of this world. Strengthen our faith to go where you send us and trust that you will bear ahead of us your very blessings. Amen. Today's first reading reports Abram, his wife Sarai, and household were set apart by God to be the beginning of a new nation. Like Adam and Eve, Noah, and his family, they followed God's command, finding courage through faith in the Lord. The reading from the 12th chapter of Genesis, beginning with verse 1. Then the Lord told Abram, Leave your country, your relatives, and your father's house, and go to the land that I will show you. I will cause you to become the father of a great nation. I will bless you and make your fa you famous, and I will make you a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people who had joined his household at Haran, and finally arrived in Canaan. Traveling through Canaan, they came to a place near Shechem, and set up camp beside the oak at Moray. At that time, the area was inhabited by Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I'm going to give this land to your offspring. And Abram built an altar there to commemorate the Lord's visit. The word of Lord, or the word of God, words of life. Thanks be to God. Please join me in responsive reading of, of Psalm 23 as printed in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd. I have nothing I need. He leads me to rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along my paths, bringing honor to his name. Even though I walk through the dark valley of death, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a peace for me in the presence of my enemies. You welcome me as a guest, anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely, Surely your, your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord. Today's second reading uplifts the example of Abraham's faith for people weighted down with doubt and sin. Today, God's promises lead us through pandemic and political uncertainty with the confidence we can follow Jesus the way, truth, and life. The reading from the 11th chapter of Hebrews, beginning with verse 1. What is faith? It is the assurance that what we hope for is going to happen. It is evidence of things we cannot yet see. God gave his approval to people in days of old because of their faith. By faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going, and even when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith, for he was a foreigner living in a tent. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Abraham did this because he was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. 
It was by faith that Sarah, together with Abraham, was able to have a child, even though they were too old, and Sarah was barren. Abraham believed that God would keep his promise, and so a whole nation came from one man, Abraham, who was too old to have any children, a nation with so many people that, like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, there is no way to count them. All these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised them, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed its promises of God. They agreed that they were not, they were no longer, they agreed that they were no more than foreigners and nomads here on earth. And obviously people who talk like that are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have found a way to go back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, and he has prepared a city for them. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham assumed, Abraham assumed that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. It was by faith that Isaac blessed his two sons, Jacob and Esau. He had confidence in what God was going to do in the future. The word of God, words of life. Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to stand as able for our gospel affirmation. with the righteousness that God offers by grace. Then the Pharisees met together to think of a way to trap Jesus into saying something for which they could accuse him. They decided to send some of their disciples along with supporters of Herod to ask Jesus this question. Teacher, we know how honest you are. You teach about the way of God regardless of the consequences. You are impartial and don't play favorites. Now tell us, what do you think about this? Is it right to pay taxes to the Roman government or not? But Jesus knew their evil motives. You hypocrites, he said. Who were you trying to fool with this trick question? Here. Show me the Roman coin used to pay the taxes. When they handed him the coin, he asked, Whose picture and title is stamped on it? Caesar's, they replied. Well then, Jesus said, Give to Caesar what belongs to him, but everything that belongs to God must be given to God. His reply amazed them, and they went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I invite you to think about your personal experience, your, your life, and who, who is someone, or can you think of several people who have made an impression not just on you, but on many people. 
many people in your community or even in the nation. Have you known people like that? How were you connected with them? What was the connection for you with those people who had an impact on many other people? Now, turning a little more towards yourself, have you ever thought you might have a significant impact on the future of many people in your family? in your community, and even beyond that? Now your first thought of the first question might have been the role of a teacher, or a trusted doctor, therapist, pastors, and friends, the impact that they can have, not only on you, but on others who come to them. might come to them for consultation on life-changing choices. Should I have this medical procedure or not? How should I protect my health? Someone who you might ask, why am I so sad all the time? Or why do I get angry so easily? Or, how do I get along with important people in my life, family members even, who think differently about things than I do? Would you want that person's influence, guidance, wisdom? Aren't grandparents people that we've been able to ask some of these questions of? Well, looking at the world around us, there's a new term for people who post a lot on social media. You know what that term is? Influencer. Influencer. But here's the question that we find in the readings today in this chapter of the story about Abram and Sarai and Isaac. And Isaac's children. How does God's presence in someone else's life, a parent, grandparent's life, influence you? Have you been encouraged to think of yourself as a person that God is providing for to be yourself? to be a special person because you have a relationship with God, because God loves you, because you're baptized, because you're forgiven. You are more than just the product of your environment and the family of your origin. You have the knowledge of being a child of God redeemed from sin's corruption by the death of Jesus on the cross, his resurrection from the grave, and your redeemed life with him have helped to influence you to be more than some would ever imagine you could be. Each of us can and do personally know the greatest influencer ever, well, the greatest alongside of his Father and the Holy Spirit, but in concert they influence the world for good, God's goodness. We hear in today's reading that, that God said to Abraham, come away from your family, come away from the land that you know, and I will show you a place that I will give to you and your children in your children's children, you will be the father of a great nation, and all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. This promise influenced Abraham, 
And he went. He was obedient to go with trust in God. For there wasn't anyone else on that journey for him to trust. And because of this, it's said that Abraham was a friend of God. In the timeline of the Bible, Abram is one of the last people to visit or be visited by God. Now, God spoke to and through many other people. God spoke to Moses through a burning bush and at other times spoke to him but was hidden by a cloud. And God still speaks to us today. God is still working in us and in our families. Faith like that of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Jacob, Moses and the prophets, all great influencers. And because they were influencing for God's ways and God's promise, they were opposed. They were opposed in the world. They faced resistance from worldly people who did not want to recognize God's power, God's presence, the good that God wills for them and for us for all humankind. Do we believe that promise that God gave Abraham, as Abraham did, that all the families of the earth would be blessed through him? Abraham's faith was attributed to him as righteousness because he believed that the one who had promised would be faithful to him and his descendants. And that faith is something that is not by our own will or understanding, but it is God working in us to believe in what is yet to be, in what is unseen. In the power of faith, Abram was, and we can be too, confident in what God is going to do in the future. That is trusting in the upper story of God's good purpose for us and for all to be carried out in the lower story of our lives as God enters in. And it's something that we will have trouble seeing beforehand, but can see behind where good has won. Mercy, humility, greater than human strength. What lies beyond our understanding and control, those things that we would like to fix, to give us some peace and some confidence about the future, well, God has it handled in ways yet to be revealed. In the meantime, we're righteous to stay close to and rely upon the creator of all that is, the creator of heaven and earth heaven and earth. In today's gospel story, some Pharisees and supporters of Herod met together to think of a way to trap Jesus, to trip him up, to say something for which they could accuse him, discredit him in the eyes of the people. And then who would be the smarter? That was their thinking. They liked being in control and self-righteous, looking down on the precious children of God. That's how it was seen from the upper story, that these Pharisees were leading others astray and they were looking down on the very children God loves and values. And Jesus, on the other hand, was telling them they're forgiven, healing them with mercy, revealing to them how great the Father's love is. Those Pharisees, those followers of Herod, they preferred their explanations of the way the world worked. Explanations, understanding in which little was left to faith or relying on God. Their intent was to bury Jesus, do away with his teaching and healing from God's mercy, mercy for sinners. After all, the only things that are certain in life are death and taxes, right? 
We've heard that before. That seemed to be the line they were talking about. But Jesus did not just tip over their boat, leaving them embarrassed for asking, but he also invoked a critical question about loyalties. You have to be loyal to one or the other? The question, is it right for a faithful Jew to pay taxes to the oppressive Roman government, that foreign government? Jesus' loyalty and ultimate trust would not be divided. Important point here, this is not a division of loyalties to give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's, but rather it all belongs to God. God has provided us enough to pay our taxes. Taxes that are for a common good and, and yes, for the emperor's pleasure and what his priorities are, but also for the common good. For each of us, our primary priority, the Bible tells us is clear, to love God with all of our heart, with all of our strength, with all of our mind, all of our soul. These things cannot be given to any worldly entity. They belong only to God. God provides for the other things alongside of, but not diminishing or in competition with loving God first. Like Abraham, we live as nomads as foreigners here on earth. Our citizenship is in a place we cannot see. The eternal kingdom which will remain even when all earthly governments have ceased to exist. Such is faith. The assurance promised is going to happen. Faith is evidence of things that we cannot yet see. Yet there, our treasure is secure because God made it so. It doesn't depend upon any human influence or control, but it's in God's hands. God, who is faithful to you and all who accept the blessings of faith, knowledge beyond our understanding, confidence comes from God. In this week's chapter of the story, Abram was freed to obey God, to go to a strange land. He was freed by faith to go with all he had, not reserving anything to become completely vulnerable in a place unknown and living among people who were not known to him or under his influence. He was not to assimilate with these people, rather retain the identity that God had given him he would be the father of a great nation through whom all the nations of the world would be blessed to hold this in trust trust with God though he would not see the fulfillment of this promise in his lifetime not even his son Isaac nor Isaac's sons Jacob and Esau each generation influenced the other, the successive generations to this promise from God. That's what this chapter in the story is about. God's promise and trusting that promise and living in faith in what is yet to be. Their hope in the present of their lives and in the future was fully in God's faithfulness to them. The author of Hebrews wrote that they looked forward to a homeland. The generations lived and died without possessing what was promised, yet held fast to it by faith, held fast to a relationship with God 
by faith God gave them and was witness to them by the successive generations, by those who influenced them. Faith in God's promise qualified them to receive the inheritance. Their sins did not disqualify them, even though God had yet to deal the death blow to sin. It is Jesus who opened the way for us and for the previous generations to receive the forgiveness of our sins, the cross spanning that insurmountable deficit of humanity's sin. Which brings us to the picture on the front of your bulletin, the ram. A strange yet powerful aspect of Abram who became Abraham and Sari, who became Sarah, their story centers around the son who would bear the promise. Abram's faith was tested and refined, as our faith is also tested and refined, but not as greatly as God tested Abraham's faith. A test that foreshadowed what God would do for us, for the forgiveness of our sins. Even though God's promise to make Abraham the father of, the great, of a great nation through whom all the nations of the world would be blessed depended upon that child Isaac, God instructed Abraham to sacrifice his son, his earthly hope. Abraham assumed the author of Hebrews writes that if Isaac died, God would have been able to restore his life. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. When Abraham was prepared to do as God commanded, God provided a substitute for Isaac to take Isaac's place. The ram caught in the thicket. Isaac was not the sacrifice that day. But God provided a substitute for Isaac's life, the ram. The sacrifice took place as generations later, Jesus became the sacrifice once and for all for the sins of all humanity, past and present. Abraham saw at that time that God provided, and we read this story to see and know that God provides. Jesus is the substitutionary sacrifice for our sake. Something to ponder. What an amazing thing to be so foreshadowed so long before reminds us again of Jesus walking with those travelers on the Emmaus Road and explaining to them what was written about him in the book of Moses and the prophets. Let's pray. Dear Lord, help us to live by faith in this land which is not under our control, to live by faith that nothing can separate us from the eternal life in your kingdom that Jesus has won for us. May this be our hope for life today and always, that nothing can separate us from your love. May that love be our strength, our hope, and our security each day. Lord, help us to care for one another as you care for and love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now verses 1 and 3 of How Great Thou Art.
worshiping here. Some later with the recording. And we are inside and outside. We are keeping the faith. We are gathering God's love around us as we confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The offertory we'll sing is Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. And may you be blessed to bring your offering, to place it in the red bucket, to send it to the church. A physical sign of your Trust in God and return to God a portion of what he has first given to you. Let us sing. season 
and even more so when it is done. We thank you for representative government, and may those elected glorify you, your values, Lord, by serving the interests of all the people they represent, the interests of our nation and all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate Lord, you provide us with access to doctors and comprehensive health care. We ask your blessing and protection upon frontline workers in health care and all others who are at personal risk, including EMTs, firefighters, and especially the police officers, our military, prison workers. Lord, in your mercy, accompanying God, may all receive your presence with gladness, your rod and staff as comfort and no peace like that of resting beside still waters. We pray for all in need of personal and medical care, especially Lord, in your mercy. We pray for families, schools, congregations of our community. May we not grow weary, but rather be enliven us, Lord, enliven us for the tasks of protecting and building up one another in love and knowledge of your faithfulness. We pray especially for safe worship, for ministries that witness of your presence for the outreach of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of the living and those who have died also, we have been blessed by the witness of those who now rest with their ancestors. Enliven us by your presence so we may also live as teachers and examples of faith for the generations who follow. Lord, in your mercy. You listen as we call on you, holy God. Enfold in your loving care all for whom we pray and comfort us in all that we share with you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who called us to be faithful and taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For I is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Announcements, information. They are printed in your bulletin. Please, please take it home for, for future reference um, and even reference to the, the readings. Um, children's education material, uh, we thank Deb for sending out that and uh, also coming from Emmanuel's office um, for children at home and for you to continue to, to share the faith and may it be a blessing to you to do that parents and grandparents also the information of resources available to to those um, needing someone to talk to and, and even um, financial assistance any other announcements No welcoming. Receive the blessing. The Lord holds you in his heart. The Lord blesses you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and is gracious to you. The Lord looks upon you with favor and gives you his peace. Amen. Now let us sing our prayer for peace.
send you with this blessing, reminding you that, that you are an influencer and we are grateful for those who have influenced us. Go in peace. God has gone before you. Christ goes with you and the Holy Spirit abides within you. Thanks be to God. Thank you.